is we are with Tim Ord today. Tim, can you hear me? I sure can. How are Thanks you doing? Thanks me on. You doing all right? Hello? Can you hear me? Yep, yep. I'm doing fine. I, uh, I'm here, so... Perfect. Let's, uh, yeah, let's crack into this. I was taking a look at some of the charts on the break, and I'm, I'm really looking forward uh, to hear what you have to say about these, so... All right. We, we can start on chart one. Uh, we presented this in the past. It's actually one of the reasons why um, I got long when every kind of was bearish. I think it was back in April or May. Uh, this indicator... Um, was as giving a bump. first. I actually tell you what it is. It's basically the middle window is the uh, BVIX, which is a VIX for the VIX, and the slash VIX, which is the VIX, which is the fear index. And this indicator is kind of a leading indicator. It gives you good clues uh, what the market's going to do. It, it shows up best at around reversals in the market, both up and down. And uh, I pointed out previous times, and this chart goes back quite a ways, uh, going back to uh, mid or about 2018. And when the s and P's goes up, a lot of times this indicator starts going down, warning that a, a top is not too uh, too far off. And I, may, uh, I outline those in red arrows uh, where they occurred. And right now, um, we've been going down here. We're actually uh, testing the uh, what uh, late September, early October lows right now. And um, Mark's rallying up a little bit here. But I want to point out on the right side of the chart is a blown up of what's going on. Um, actually, uh, if you flip to page two, it kind of uh, gives you a better view of it. Yeah. Or chapter two, or a chart two, rather on on, on page two, uh, kind of shows you what happened at the last high of um, July. This uh, July, with market was going up, this indicator was going down. Now we got something the opposite. We got the market pretty much going down, making lower lows, while this indicator uh, so far is making higher lows. So it gives you a warning, an advance warning. It doesn't say that the bottom's in. But it does say they're approaching a bottom. Uh, so it, um, if it, this chart, uh, let's see what goes back to what um, March there. If you look at the March low, that blue box, uh, the market was making lower lows. This indicator went sideways. Uh, then again, in the, in the July July high, uh, you know, the S&Ps were going up. This was going down. So now we got back to the blue box again. We got a positive divergence. So um, there's something developing here pretty uh, pretty close. You know, maybe this week, maybe next week. But what I'm really looking for is on chart three. So we, we got a, 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 a divergence, a bullish divergence in the VVIX to VIX ratio. But you need really a lot. Uh, and actually, that indicator is a fear indicator. It's the reason why I kind of lean that way. Fear only happens at bottoms, or panic only happens at bottoms. Tops are a little bit more difficult. But uh, this indicator is another fear indicator, which is a 10-day arms, which is second window up from the bottom. And when this indicator gets around 0.2 or higher, you, you, you got panic in the market. And a lot of times, you're approaching a low or at the low. We had that first uh, that first low we had back in uh, late September or October. That's the shaded pink areas, or times when the the trend is up uh, of 1.2 or higher. We had that back in uh, the September, um, early October low, and right now I got a, a kind of a blue shaded area that says that we're, we're coming in like 0.91, which is not bullish at all. Uh, so that tells me the market's not, you know, though we're testing the previous lows here, we don't have enough panic. Panic creates energy, and we don't have enough energy to really pop off this low yet. So, but you do have a bullish divergence on the VVIX to VIX ratio, but not enough panic in the markets, according to the trend readings, to just uh, for the low to begin right now. So, uh, Maybe we're going a little fast here, but let's flip to chart four. Right here? Okay, uh, chart four. Uh, okay, I wrote uh, the blue lettering is, is when the, the trend reached panic levels and the 
and uh, the ticks reach panel, uh, panic levels. And I recorded all those panic levels, uh, what day they occurred there. And back at the um, late September, early October low, we had panic in the trend and ticks. I got them labeled there. Market rallied up. We didn't get go. Uh, didn't get. We didn't have enough strength, continued strength to actually go higher. So we're coming back down, retesting the lows. Well, the market was down five days in a row going into Monday. The market's down five days. This is a quantitative analysis, but if the market's down five days in a row, the market will be lower uh, within five days, 83% of the time. And that statistics dates back for about, I think it was five or 10 years. Mm-hmm. I forgot how it was, but there's it quite a bit of statistics, studies done on this. So even though we hit a low, we bounced up, that's not the final low. So I'm thinking we're going to go back down and test the recent low we had here on Monday, if not break it a little bit. And the bottom window is a 10-day trend. Well, the 10-day trend needs to get up to around 1.2 or higher. So I'm thinking what's going to happen here is the market's going to fall back down, uh, if, if not this week, probably next week. And it's probably going to create a lot of panic in the ticks and trend, and that's going to push the trend up to 1.2 or higher. And that'll be the signal, finally, uh, to get going to the upside. You know, that's a lot of ifs, ands, or buts. But if you look at today's volume, right now we got virtually no volume going on this rally, and that's kind of a clue that right. didn't have enough strength uh, to get going to the upside. So we're going to fall back. How much we're going to fall back, I don't know. Usually when you... You're afraid to make the, pull the trigger on a trade. It's usually the best trade you make. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I'm, I'm thinking for this week's out or late this week or early next week, we're probably going to fall back. And it's going to be all the bad news about something. You know, it's, it's, you know, we got some wars going on. could be bad news about that. I'm not sure what the trigger is going to be, but it always seems to be some sort of a news announcement at the lows. And that's when the trend really pops up. You know, me. You may see a 1.5, maybe two or three trend on a close, and that'll be my trigger if that happens. Uh, uh, probably end up with a buy signal. But I think we're close to a low according to the VVIX VIX ratio. But we need the, the 10-day trend to pop up there to 1.2. If that happens, uh, then I'm probably back on a buy signal. So, right on. Yeah, just waiting for that juice to, to get back up there. Good stuff. Well, Tim, yep. uh, please stay tuned. We still have uh, some charts to go over, and we're really enjoying it. So, uh, folks, we will be right back uh, with Tim Ord. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, are you still with us? I sure am. I'm right here. Awesome. So, I think we were just looking at uh, the 10-day uh, trend in relation to the SPY. That's chart four. So, what else are we looking at today? Uh, do you have any you got any questions about the first four charts? Or if not, we can move on. No, yeah, I, I think that was explained very well. I'm ready to move on for it. All right, uh, let's go to chart five. Perfect. We're looking uh, at GDX here. Yes, yeah, the GDX chart, and there's this uh, GDX is kind of like a different animal compared to the S and P's. S and P's kind of work off of uh, panic and euphoria type indicators, and where GDX. Uh, I mean, if you get panic in GDX, it, it can still move lower. And I never really found a good indicator to really signal a bottom as far as uh, panic indicators. So I kind of went a different direction over the years to, to figure out what works best. And what seems to work best is the uh, up-down volume advanced client type indicators. So it kind of measures the internal strength or weaknesses uh, that that GDX has. And I, this chart, uh, chart number five, only like goes back about a little over, a, about a year or whatever. And the blue areas are times, uh, actually I should tell you what the bottom two indicators are. The bottom indicator is the 18 day average up down volume, or uh, is that the, yeah, it's the up down volume advanced, uh, it's the 18 day average of the up down volume and next window higher is the 18-day average of the advanced decline. So when uh, when these two indicators are above minus 10, and that's when I shared in blue, the market's in an uptrend. When these two indicators are below minus 10, the market's in the downtrend. So over the last uh, 
basically year, it shows the times of his uptrends and downtrends. And this is, uh, both these indicators work pretty well defining divergence. In other words, when the S&P is making lower lows and those two indicators are making higher lows, uh, if you look at the uh, bottom back in March, uh, you know, the mark, uh, GDX was falling down, made a lower low, and both those indicators made higher lows. That's circled in red. And going into a top of uh, was about April, May there, uh, GDX was making higher highs, and both those indicators are making lower highs. So let's get over to where we are at the current time frame, which is basically starts in about September. The market, uh, I was pretty bullish in August, and the market still fell back. But both those indicators made uh, circled in red, and I, I noticed, or noted with the red arrows that the market was making, both indicators were making higher highs and higher lows as GDX was pr- uh, pretty much working at a little bit lower low. And that's in the past is a bullish divergence, but the market still went down. I think it's just kind of a shakeout type decline. But both indicators, as we're talking, I uh, made this earlier in the day, as long as they both above remain above minus 10, the uptrend's intact. And so far, there's no divergence. Actually, uh, if you look on the GDX chart, we're pretty much matching the previous highs uh, we had in the uh, September period there up around that 30 range. And both indicators are still making higher highs and uh, on both those indicators. So that's a positive divergence. So even though we re- retraced here minor, uh, minorly, uh, we at the moment, I don't see any top. If both those indicators were actually falling back, approaching minus 10, I'd be a little bit more worried. But so far, that's not happening. So even on a short-term basis, we've got a minor consolidation, but this consolidation is probably, in my opinion, the halfway point of the next move up. The reason why I say that, we can flip to chart number six. All right. And so uh, the previous chart was a daily chart, and it kind of looks at the short-term moves. Uh, and the, this chart, it uh, looks at the bigger moves. It's a weekly chart, and this chart goes back to actually beginning of 2022 so it's uh one you know you're close to two years or whatever and um the bottom window is the uh, cumulative uh, weekly advanced decline and the next window up is the cumulative up down volume indicators and uh tried working on this for a while that there was something there i could never figure out why until i i put bollinger bands to it and uh, what seems to really work well, when both those indicators close above the mid Bollinger Band, it's a little bit late uh, on the buy and a little bit late on the sell, but it gets you in the main trend. That's why I was kind of looking for in the weekly time frames because I got shorter term indicators that work pretty well at getting in the short term time, but you don't know if you're catching a big trend or not. It may be just a short term trend and the market may fall back again. Well, this catches the trend. So, you know, most of these times when the uh, signal is generated, they're usually generated anywhere from two to six months trends. And if you notice to, to the right here, we closed above the mid Bollinger Band on both indicators last week. Now, the market went up for three weeks before that triggered that indicator. But since now we're above both uh, the Mid Bollinger Bands to suggest at least we got two months to go here on this rally and possibly six months, which is basically next, um, what be, uh, we've been March, April time frame. Don't know how far that is out, but it's a multi, it's usually a multi month indicator. Uh, so we got something on a bigger time frame, at least so far, uh, uh, is, is signaled here. So how big is the rise? As long as those, both those indicators remain above their mid Bollinger bands, it could go on for a while. As a matter of fact, the last time they gave a sell was back in April of this year, and I, that's the last red line, and it hasn't turned bullish just until now. So April until October was that uh, six months. So it, it declined for six months, caught that six month decline, and now it may catch a you know a six month or I don't know at least two month advance. So. Um, on a short-term basis, you know, chart the previous chart looks bullish. On a mid-term basis, 
uh, the bigger trend looks bullish. So how high is high? We'll have to wait and see. So right, and I want to ask on. Oh, sorry. Ahead, sorry. I want to, oh, go ahead, Tim. I'm sorry. Nope, I'm 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 done. Go I, ahead. I was going to ask on chart five. I I like this. Look at it. You know, the closer you approach this kind of ten line here, right? The obviously the more nervous you should get on a trend reversal. Is there? You know, obviously we're going to have a little dip right here based on this chart, right? How many consecutive days, I guess, of approaching this this ten line here would make you nervous? Is that does that question make sense? Oh, the minus ten line, you mean? Yes, yes. Or, all right. Well, we're a long ways from it, I guess. Yeah. And normally, a lot of times that that not always, but a lot of times that uh, yeah. So far, both markets, the up down volume advance client indicators, are not. Uh, falling back. I mean, they're holding pretty steady at the recent high, so you're not seeing a, a pullback yet, so that tells me that we're probably, even though the market fell back here, GDX has fell back, right. both those indicators are not falling back, showing strength. But if they just start approach minus 10, chances are, if they're approaching minus 10, they're going to go through minus 10. Right that's on. not happening here, so um, I'm thinking you, know, you could actually buy here, and I think you'd be okay. Awesome. Tim, thank you so much for joining us, guys. That is Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle, ord-oracle.com. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. All right. Thanks for having me on. All right. Have a great yesterday, Tim. Bye now. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.